Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very interesting review, impressions of a knife that was loaned to me by one of my subscribers. So thank you very much to those awesome subscribers allowing me to check out some knives that otherwise I probably would not get to check out. Today we're looking at a Tucson knife and this particular Tucson knife is called a TS49. It is a frame lock knife with um, uh, titanium scales or handles with carbon fiber inlay and the blade on this thing is D2. So if we look at that, yeah, we'll see that right there, D2 steel. So that's D2, and it's not CPS D2, or CPM, excuse me, D2. It's the uh, ingot version. So, you know, that's how it's able to be an affordable knife. This is definitely going to be a budget knife, so we'll talk about that a little later on, because, you know, you're looking at a knife, just a spoiler, it's about $70. And if you get it from maybe, uh, you go to White Mountain Knives and you find it there available, you can use my RNK10 code to get 10% off and might even get a little cheaper. So there you go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this knife. All right, so the knife manufactures Tucson and Tucson manufactures their own knives. Uh, the designer, I believe it's an in-house design by Tucson. So this is going to be something that they've designed within their uh, own, um, you know, um, manufacturing facility or their design house or whatever you want to call it. So... Um, that's what I will say for that. Um, it is a very interesting knife. These are what I would say, you know, we can double check that. Um, I believe these are T8s. Yeah, T8s, T8s right there. If we look at that, uh, T8s, T8s, T8s. I think that one's a T6. All right, so the the steel bar, um, um, the steel bar insert, lock bar, or travel overstop, whatever it is, a T6. Everything else is going to be T8. So this is a carbon fiber inlay. Nice little piece of carbon fiber. It is raised a little bit, but it looks intentional because it's exactly the same on both sides and it's chamfered there on the side. So that's nice. It is nicely chamfered all the way around. So the materials, this is titanium. It's a frame lock. Titanium metal deep pocket carry clip, single screw there. It's got a hole for a lanyard, not prioritized. You get relatively deep carry as you can see. Um, it looks like it's a yep, captive pivot with one screw there. So that's nice. It is a flipper and it has a little uh, a fuller um, here, but it's not very accessible for uh, deploying that. So I don't know, it, since this is not my knife, I'm not going to take it apart. I'm not going to tune it. You know, maybe tuning it, you might be able to get this and be able to do a reverse flick with it. I was not able to do that at all with this one because it was tuned for very tightly for a nice uh, flipper. So, I mean, if flipper is your, if that's your majority or your, your priority as far as a knife, then this, this flips really, really well as far as a flipper. All right. Uh, you can see the little Tucson logo there. Very, very you know, subtle, not not overly billboarded. You got a little uh, design there. I'm not sure if that's the Tucson logo or if that's the designer. I, I, I couldn't find someone, I couldn't find a designer on there and I, I didn't see anywhere where it noted it, but if that's the designer, I'd be interested to find out if anybody knows. So you can comment down below, that would be cool. But um, there is some nice jimping on the blade and the spine of the blade. This is nicely chamfered, not overly sharp. A very small swedge for your cuts. It's a very thick tanto blade, very flat grind, not a dual uh, co uh, compound grind. It's flat on both sides, but definitely a tanto with a tip. Very long tip tanto with a drop point. So we can call this a modified drop point tanto whatever knife, you know. Blade police, let me know. But, um, you know, we'll just call it a modified version, right? So. The, the lockup here is pretty good. We're looking at about a good 30%, I would say, maybe 20, 30%, so solid. No blade plates in there, really solid. Going into the detent, nice click there. No rock in the detent. It was really nicely centered when I got this, so that's great, and it stayed centered really well. So that's pretty cool. It's got some heft to it, and if you look inside of it, and you know, titanium handles, carbon fiber inlay, we talked about D2 steel, a nice satin finish. You'll notice that everyone seems to have a different grind. This looks like almost a curved grind, if I look at that a little bit. You can see that, right? Maybe. And this is a straight grind here, and so kind of a nice little touch, right? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, hate it at all. It's a little cutout here as well for the flipper. So when you flip, you get in here, you kind of have that little ability to push down just a little bit more when it's a little cutout relief. The relief here is really good access for the frame lock. You can see that a nice chamfering right there, nice smooth flat finish, nothing rounded or radius so that you're not digging into your hands. Very comfortable to get to, which is nice. It drops relatively well. I mean, you know, it's not tuned. I, I didn't oil it. I didn't take anything apart. I might tune this to be a little smoother to take advantage of the fuller and maybe possibly re reverse flick it. I can get my finger in there and I can get some pressure. It's just really, really tight, which is really perfect for like if you want a strong, powerful, you know, flip. You know, it's almost, I mean, I think I can fail it, but it's, it's real hard to fail this one. And so it's really tuned well for the flipper. Now, the detent ball, as you noticed, to clear it, 
you're not gonna clear it till you're about right there. So that's pretty far, right? And clearing it, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear it all the way. Thanks to the, to the fact this goes down, you can see where my thumb is. Yeah, so definitely a lot of clearance. So that's nice, I like that a lot. Uh, again, I talked about the chamfering, it's all the way around, which makes it pretty comfortable. Got a nice grip there, you got a good grip on here. This clip does not, it's not prioritized. It does, I've noticed it does seem to slide off a little bit here and be, be, being a single screw and being inset and being thin, that is something you have to consider whether that's a little movement. Um, I've noticed that when I first got it, it you know, I, I looked at that and, and I, and it moved right back to where it was. I think that's where it's naturally supposed to be. So I don't know if that's loose. I don't think it is. When I checked it, I remember it was fine. But it's a thin clip, so you know, there's that. So if you're gonna do a hard grip, you might be careful, you might bend it or something. So be careful with that, right? That's just something. But it doesn't dig in, it's nice and rounded. There's no uh, harsh corners or anything in there. Um, and if you notice, I don't know if you can see the micro milling, if we can get a little close. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Can you see that? There's like some very fine micro milling. You see little lines on there. Definitely on this side for sure. Uh, if we can get a little close. Uh, let me see if I can get a little closer. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. You can see that right there, which I think is really nice. A little touch gives you a little texture. I think that's kind of cool, right? So very cool. Let's go back. All right. So I think that's some nice touches for a $70 knife. I mean, really crazy. The retail you get it at the White Mountain Knives is 70 bucks. That's just a lot it offers. Now it is D2 steel and it's a pretty thick chunk of D2 steel. So it is definitely um, frame lock, you know, drops really nicely as far as closing, easy to access, the flipper works. Can't do the full or reverse flick. That's something you have to understand. It is cage ceramic ball bearings in there, or I don't know if it's ceramic, maybe steel ball bearings, but it is ball bearings in there and they're caged in there. So that's nice as far as, and you got to be careful. You got to see, you got to clear that detent. If you're not clear, it's going to want to bounce back up. See, now I'm not clear. I got to get at least to the right there where my finger drops like that. And then you got to make sure it goes there. So that's, you know, it's a budget knife and you're getting titanium with carbon fiber inlay with D2 steel. I mean, I mean, that's a quite, quite a crazy deal for what you're getting, I think, with a lot of steel in here. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. I think, I think Tucson's got a lot of budget value there. So I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. All right, so let's do a little bit of measurements on this, but real quick, let me just get you a nice close-up view of the knife. You can see the Tucson logo right there really nicely, right? And then you can see over here the, uh, notice that that is captive pivot, by the way, and then you see back over here, and, and I'm wondering if that's a design or if that's a Tucson design. So if anybody has already commented, thank you. And if you don't know, if somebody does, would you please let me know? I think it would be really cool. And then you go back here, it's got a nice backspacer, no standoffs back there, but it's a titanium backspacer and titanium mill deep pocket carry clip with a single screw. Uh, you'll notice nicely centered and all that. And we'll take a close up look at the that Tonto blade, which is really nice and beautifully polished and uh, satin finish on that as well, with a nice flipper as well. I would not use this as a trigger to choke up on. The jimping is nice. You can definitely get a nice push on that, but this be very careful with, okay? All right, now let's get into the measurements. Measurements, weight, and all that good stuff. Got a little dust on top of that. Let's zero that out. Oh, I did a timer. Oh, I guess you got to uh, zero it. How do you do that? All right, I'm gonna turn it off because I don't normally mess with a timer, but maybe I should get a different scale at some point, right? That doesn't have a timer on there, so I don't mess it up. Now let's get the weight on that. Yeah, so it's pretty heavy. It's 4.1, 4.17 ounces, not a light knife. And part of that, you can see that there's not really a whole lot of milling going on in there. And even on the side over here on the frame lock side, you can see that's, uh, let's see if we can get the light in there a little bit. If we can get that, you'll notice, yeah. It's not a whole lot of milling going on right there. Uh, did have a little cutout for the carbon fiber, but that carbon fiber stands up a little bit, so it's not a whole lot of weight relief. It's a pretty hefty knife. So let's go ahead and do a little measurement on the, the weight. Got my table's a little dirty, all right. So let's see what the overall measurement. So we're just, uh, looks like we're just, yeah, we're right. I want to say 1 16th or 1 64th inch uh, short of 8 inches. It's right at 8 inches, just just barely under, okay? Cutting length, we're looking at just about 3 uh, three and 3 eighths of an inch cutting length. Uh, going to the base of the handle, we are a little past 3 and a half inches. I want to say we're at 3 and I might say 5 eighths of an inch, right? Full cutting length, if we go from that to the edge, we're definitely at, again, 3 and 
three, I want to say three and three eighths of an inch. Sorry if you hear some background noise there. There's some, some, some of my kids yelling in the background. So, um, so three and three eighths of an inch right there, which is not bad at all. So, you know, you got a fairly good amount. Let's go ahead and look at the blade stock thickness on this knife. Let's go ahead and see now. We have to, might have to, yeah, I have to, well, no, we can get, get to it right there. All right, here we go. All right, so we're at one, one, 0.149, 149 hundredths of an inch. Go back to that, do a measure one more time. Let's go nice and easy. Yeah, I mean, we're like right between one tenth and two tenths of an inch. So 150, 150 hundredths of an inch, right? So that's, I mean, it's not it's not a very thin knife. It's it's not a very giant, gigantically thick knife, but it's a good amount of steel for a budget knife, a good amount of D2 steel that's really nicely sand polished and everything. You know, it's got a pretty decent edge on there. So I'd say that's that's not a bad deal at all. Uh, again, you got to be careful about that little, careful about that little detent. Make sure you clear that the, the detent when you're closing if you're trying to drop shut. All right, so that's the so knife category. This is absolutely a budget knife. This is definitely under 100 bucks, uh, 70 dollars if you go to White Mountain Knives, and if you get a little 10 percent, like I said, the RNK 10 from Rob's Nerdy Knives, RNK 10 gets you 10 percent off. So, you know, definitely could be less than 70 dollars. At least that is at the time of the recording of this video. All right, so that's where it fall into a budget for purpose. Definitely EDC. I would say hard use with that very robust thick blade. Even that Tonto tip has got some robustness to it coming out to a very sharp pointy tip which you can really get like some fertilizer you can get some you know mulch and definitely dog food cat food uh, cases of water bottle and stuff like that will work out really really nicely with that tip you have a second tip for a nice cut if you need it besides the point you can do the cut right there so that's really really nice all right so um then we also have sorry about that again my kids are yelling in the background i apologize that to everybody uh hopefully they know that i'm recording but <laughs> can't always control the kids in the family uh so um so anyways, the purpose of this EDC use, hard use, absolutely could be a good car knife, a good, you know, working around the yard knife. It has a nice aesthetic to it, so it looks really, really nice. If you're looking for a first knife to kind of step it up a little bit, this would definitely be something I think you could consider. I mean, it has a nice, almost clean look for a church or work or something like that. I mean, it's a little bigger, more than three inches, so you have to keep that in mind with your state and uh, local knife laws, right? Um, so there you go. All right, handle design. Handle design is really nice. It's nicely chamfered all the way around. The, the, the pocket clip really does not get in the way. Everything is very contoured in my, 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 my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me, even the, the handles are contoured around here on the top, so it makes it a very nice full grip for the presentation. The pocket clip is a little thin. It does move around a little bit, but it doesn't burn or dig in. It just makes me worry if you do a lot of hard use, that might after a while wiggle out or bend or something. So just be, be aware of that. Um, deployment. Flipping works great. I mean, it really is tuned for a really strong flip. Uh, people who like medium to uh, stronger detents are gonna love this and it's gonna deploy and it's be very hard to fail, I think. Uh, I've tried to fail it and I really wasn't quite able to. I think I might have done it once, I'm not sure, but <clears throat> it's, you know, you have to would really work hard at it to fail it, right? But that's it. Uh, the, the little fuller here that's cut out looks like it could possibly be in use is not really usable. I would say that's because the, it's uh, tuned more for the flipper and then a very strong flipper. If you're wanting to use the fuller, I'd be willing to try that. I'd be willing to, uh, you know, tune the detent down a little bit and see. You could still have to flip. You might have to, you know, be stronger in the light switch to ensure that you're deploying it. And if you would like to get to the fuller and then be able to flip it, I just couldn't get enough leverage in there. Even left-handed going like this, I couldn't get it in there to, to break the detent because it was so strong. So I don't know if it would work, but, you know, to me, it seems like it. they want you to maybe possibly use the detent here, the, the fuller. It's, it's got enough sharp edge where you can get your meat of your finger in there and get some grip. I just can't get it to move. So there you go. It's really just a flipper only. Closing design, I think, is really nice. It's cut out really well. Nice cutaway here, chamfered there, easy to get to. It doesn't It's not a hard, you have to have a really thin, sharp little finger to be able to get in there to close it. So that's really nice. I like that. The action is good. Uh, for a $70 knife, I would say the action is really good, right? You know, I mean, we're not talking the $200, $300, $500 knife here. We're talking $70 knife, and the action is pretty phenomenal, I think. Fidget factor. All right, so a scale of 1 to 10 out of the fidget factor, because you can only do the flipper and... Uh, because there's no, you know, this this jimping here, this kind of takes it away. It kind of feels like it's a a faux fuller, you know. It's sort of like just looking there for aesthetics, even though it's cut out like you should be able to use it. So to me, that's a little disappointing. I, I don't like that personally because I love multiple deployments. And if you're going to tease me with a deployment, you know, I should be able to use it, right? That's just my opinion. Either make that a little more of a fuller, uh, fuller 
<laughs> get it fuller fuller anyways a bigger fuller you know then that would be really cool uh, otherwise uh, you know I don't know make some other design I don't care but just don't don't tease me with that to me that's a little bit of a tease I get it's nice for the cut you know cut away for the finger to get a good grip and you know presentation but it would be nice to be able to have that so I'm gonna give this a 5 out of 10 as far as fidgety fidget factor so you can it's a good flipper flipper works well so out of that you can get a 5 out of 10 uh, as far as the fidgety goodness um, in, as far as in the ergos and feel, I would say that, um, you know, I'm going to give it a 90%. Um, I, I don't know, and I'm taking 10% off because this is, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be just a faux fuller to kind of make you feel like it's there for aesthetics or if it's actually supposed to be used. It's sharp enough. I could use it if I could, if the detent wasn't strong enough. So I'm going to knock 10% off. But as far as flipping, it's really nice. It's strong. It's a great flipper. I don't feel like it, it's very hard to fail. Uh, so that's really nice. I mean, as far as the knife and the cost and everything, I think that's great. Overall thoughts. Overall thoughts, I think it's a great budget consideration. If this aesthetic really speaks to you, if you really like the way this looks, you like the, the ergos on here, you like the carbon fiber inlay, you're great with D2 and you want a Tonto kind of blade with a longer, you know, uh, extended part of the second part of the blade you know this is kind of nice this is it, it's definitely robust enough that you can do some hard work with it so definitely worth considering so as far as that um, so I, I think it's recommended recommended as far as budget knife I would definitely recommend it as far as I'll put it into my budget knives recommended budget knives for sure uh, this is definitely under the hundred dollar range and it works well I just wish that you know a couple of things I wish this was tuned to be able to use the fuller or the fuller was more accessible or could be used and if it's not meant to be a fuller you know a simple uh, a groove not, not a full groove that you can actually get some traction in and be able to feel like you could pull out because I, I mean I can open it like this but the, this detent is so strong so you know that's that's my only gripe I will for the cost point of this knife I mean otherwise it's really a great deal uh, so yeah definitely recommend it so that's my thoughts on there uh, guys have any questions about this review any questions about the knife please feel free to comment down below I do try to read all the comments and reply to everyone and uh, appreciate any questions any ideas any suggestions for future reviews love to hear from you guys uh, if you found this review interesting you found it fun uh, worthwhile would you please consider liking the video and if you've already liked the video would you then consider subscribing to the channel so subscribing and liking the video and the channel really really helps this channel out to grow um, and allows us to do more things allows me to have more content do more things for you and I, I would really appreciate it and if you've already done the, the subscription maybe consider hitting clicking that notification button so you can be notified of future content when it's available and if you've done all of that maybe check me out over on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives again that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives hey thanks so much for watching today have a great day and a great week bye